And I have been asked to say a few words about what peace means for me. And this is actually a little bit tricky for a speaker. Because a speaker in Swedish Parliament is supposed to be very politically neutral. So please allow me to be very personal. In 1994, I was elected member of the Swedish Parliament. I was 29 years old. I was very proud and I really longing for going up to Stockholm putting forward proposals, pushing the green button or the red button, and change the people's life. Doing it better for my voters, doing it better for my constituency back home. I came here to this room, and this is the second chamber of the Swedish Parliament. This is the meeting room to the biggest political party room. I'm a social democrat, so my seat is actually over here. In 1994, Sweden was still suffering from the financial crisis in the beginning of the 90s. We started with increasing a lot of taxes. We started with cutting down enormously on different benefits, children benefits, allowances for unemployed people. It was tough. Being a politician, going home back to my hometown, my store, to meet my workers, they were really angry about everything that we did. But in the end of 94, we politicians believed that we were out. We saw the light in the tunnel. Finally, we could rest. And then in spring 95, four events happened that changed my view about things in the world. Four events. It was an earthquake in Korba, in Japan. That forced me as a newly elected MP to come back here in this chamber and sit on that chair and increase even more taxes. It forced me as an MP to cut down even more in the Swedish welfare system because the financial industry shaked because of the earthquake in Korea. The presidents in Spain were suddenly released and the devaluation was enormous in Spain. Hit Sweden enormously. Interest rate went up, currency exchange rate went up. Chiapas Indians, do you remember? Indians in Chiapas and Mexico made a kind of a revolution. The financial sector was nervous. I had to go in here and take new decisions about increasing taxes and cutting in the welfare because Sweden's economy was fucked. And there was a guy in Singapore working at a bank called Batteries Bank. He himself worked in the financial industry. Uh, he did such a wonderful job, so he, you know, made the whole bank go bankrupt because he speculated so much. I, as a new entity, I had to go in here, take decisions in my party group of increasing taxes and lowering the welfare in Sweden. I realized, as a newly elected MP, 29 years old, that this world is enormous interdependent. What we do here matters for other people in the world. What they do matters for us. This world is intertwined. Think about it. If you look at the world map, you can easily see that prosperous countries have prosperous neighbors because we mostly trade and work with our neighboring country. For Sweden, Germany and Norway is some of the biggest trading partners. We have been living in a peace for more than 200 years. Thanks to great neighbors. We are a welfare state with a good economy and healthy societies because we have good neighbors. So if you want to be in a prosperous country, make your neighbors prosperous. Because you see, you are more secure if your neighbor is secure. You are more prosperous when your neighbor is getting more prosperous. And if people and countries around the world realized that this is not a zero-sum game where I benefit from someone else's losses, if everyone realized that we are interdependent, we are dependent, I think this world will be a much better place. So, what I'm trying to say is, it's actually quite simple. 
It has been said in all religions. It has been said in all cultures all around the world. In one simple sentence, what is called the golden rule. Do to others what you want them to do to you. The world is interdependent. What you do matters for others. What they do matters for you. That 